These two portraits of my mum are very different. This one was a test I made, which turned out to be much more than just a test. And the other one was the initial idea to print my mom underneath this flower bouquet as if it were her hair. In this video, I'll show you how I made them both. Hello, jelly fans. I wanted to combine, as I said in the last but one video, these flower bouquets that are painted of fuchsia flowers with my mother's portrait and I asked viewers which of the mock-ups I should print. Thank you for your votes. The 2C version clearly won, for which I will have to make a large lino carving. But this one was also liked quite a bit, so I was going to make the silver medal winner version first. I was very nervous about ruining the delicate, gorgeous flower prints, so I wanted to make a test with this one first. I printed out the Photoshop version, and as I don't have a bigger printer, I have to tape two prints together. Almost always, you see the line where it is taped afterwards. But you know me, little flaws can make an artwork much more interesting. On the back, I'm taping vertical TESA stripes as well, just in case these stripes will leave an impression on the gel plate too. I start with an etching ink that I have bought because it was said you can clean this one easily with water. That may be true, but look what happened. This paper I put underneath to see the paint and what I'm doing better. And it is also good for registering the printing paper, which is of the same size. That stripe of paint you see there is on the underside of the gel plate. The paint seems to be too sticky and not enough, but you have to roll it out for quite a while and then it gets wonderfully smooth and even. Don't worry, I'll switch to acrylics in a minute. Now the strange thing is, this paint, while still in the tube, looks sepia and also in the first stage of rolling it out, but when it's rolled out completely it looks like a regular black and even more so when I print it, so I'll end up not using this print. Now I wanted to make a background first. This is an egg container that I unfolded to print it. It had a funny shape, I thought. If I'd print the outside because it is sealed somehow, I would probably get a decalcomania effect, but I didn't want that here. So I print the inside made of cardboard. And this piece was in the inside holding the eggs in position. This is a shopping bag that has a printed on flower pattern. I wasn't sure if it would even print, but it did. Sorry, the printing of the bag is off camera here. Now I take a deli paper for taking off excess paint. It is very thin and maybe rice paper, I'm not sure. But it is sturdy and at the same time soft, so it goes into all the edges. Doesn't tear when I rub it over the objects. When I take everything off, it is visible that the objects made very nice impressions. I'm printing with a Fabriano Bristol paper. It is a lot cheaper than printing or watercolor paper and it has 200 GSM. Registering it and give it some rubs, but you don't have to wait as with acrylics here. The ink immediately is absorbed by the paper. So this is very nice. Love the cardboard boxes and the lovely bag flower. But it is black and not sepia. Would I print this on top? There would be nothing but chaos on the print and you couldn't tell anything apart. It is a nice print anyway and I'm surely going to do something with it. But for now I'm switching to acrylics and have the opportunity to use the golden oxide, the color with the longest name in the world, which is my favorite color and very transparent. And it would be a good contrast to the black mom. Black mom? and not compete with it. So, placing the cardboard boxes again, and here comes the homage part. The fish cans! I saw one of Mark Yates' more recent videos where he used a found can. It was gorgeous. 
but I didn't find it flat in the street, overrun by a thousand cars, like a real artist does, but bought it, ate it, cleaned it, and stomped on it. So that's not quite the same, is it, Mark? And by the way, I already bought like five pieces of Mark Yates' artwork, as I'm such a fan. Nice result, though. Very interesting. The braille had some black on it still, and it mixed with the gold and showed some green tones. I always find it amazing uh, f with, when you're printing objects. It has this almost photographic quality sometimes. Or as someone said in the comments here, an x-ray quality. And even though is this was supposed to be just a test, I want to make, um, well, I, I can already see it. it's becoming much more than just a test. So I want to add some collage papers, a piece of cardboard that I used. And these are papers that I used for eco-dyeing when I made um, eco-dyeing with fabrics. I never made a video about that, but it's very, very, um, I, I made a course with a, with a master teacher and um, I cannot actually not do it at home because you have to have a lot of special tools for that. And anyway, these were the papers that were in between the fabric layers and they turned out so interesting that I just wanted to keep them. Now I can use them. I'm placing the background underneath the jelly plate so I can see what I'm doing when I'm printing the photo. It's very important the gel plate um, underneath you put a plexiglass or something or you can also use real glass. Something sturdy that uh, the gel plate clings, clicks, uh, sticks to so because you have to turn it and place it on the picture later and so you don't want it to wobble around all the time then it would be very hard to register. So I've inked up with a golden open slow drying color in black and placed the print uh, the photo on it and now you see what I mean. Now you turn it and because it's sturdy and doesn't wobble around, wobble around it's easy to place it in the right place where you want it. <laughs> That's funny. The back side took the ghost print too. Yeah, that's pretty nice, I think. In places it's uh, a lot too light, so I have to do some work out with the pencils. But it wouldn't be me without some pencil work afterwards. On the eco dyeing papers, I'm doing a little pencil work uh, just to give it more contrast. And um, you can do it like a frottage, actually, and rub it um, on top of the high uh, spaces. Some of the body outlines have to be strengthened. And I'm following the pattern that is actually created by the Photoshop filter. I think it's the Conte filter. Uh, I don't really know what it means, but it is nice. And I'm filling in some white uh, to get the only the body parts lighter. I'm taking care that I do it only where skin is visible. The Photoshop filter, the Conte filter, actually makes the dark shadows turn light and it looks like my mother would have a double chin. I don't want to do that to her, so I'm creating a shadow again. This in the back it was also a shadow. Uh, it looks like big hair now and I'm going to leave it like that. With the white pencil for the skin, I'm also following the graphic hatching lines here. And of course, the most important thing, the eyes. It's very delicate structure here, so I'm doing nothing but darkening what is there.
The stuff I printed for the background, I want to make some outlines, trying to make it only in, in the opposite, the light, uh, so in the right and downwards direction. Didn't want to do it, but in the end I did. I did give her her beautiful brown eyes back. What a test. They're often the best in the end. Now for the real one. I'm so nervous about this one because I don't want to ruin the flower print that I made in the last video. Um, yeah, I'm just doing a mock-up with a copy to see roughly how it, I want it to fit there and see if the size of the print is all right, goes with the flowers. Um, but for the actual print, I didn't want to cut her shape out. Um, I'm just using the whole page because I don't want a rim around the rim in the, in the photo, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so I put um, I put it against a window as I want to cut out a mask for this. This masking sheets, these masking sheets are just fantastic for this. They're quite expensive, but some some pieces you just have to use them. And I cut it out. It's a it's a, also a very complicated uh, shape, but uh, it's worth it in the end. And very important, it's not on camera, but I uh, sprayed uh, the whole um, thing because there's a lot of pencil work there. And I was afraid the masking sheet uh, would take off too much of the red pencil. So I sprayed it two times with a special spray that's good for pencils. So you can see I'm fiddling about with it and cutting it in three pieces to, um, I don't know why that is, but it never fits, <laughs> no matter how, how you try. So I'm also cutting off the upper parts of the head, which was a mistake, as you'll see in a minute. I put a mad board frame on it, as we Germans say passepartout, I don't know if you use that French word, um, to be sure to keep uh, the frame, the outside of the print, uh, free from color. And practicing again the turning of the gel plate onto the motif. Um, the, the plexiglass is broken in two pieces, but that doesn't matter. And here we go again with a golden open black. And I'm coming in with a baby wipe here because it's easier to take the excess color off as long as your uh, photo transfer sheet is all is still on there uh, but I wet the rim a little bit too much so you can see that a little bit of the paper gets stuck on the gel plate so I have to clean that but that's no problem and don't be confused that this doesn't seem to fit into the flower bouquet uh, remember it's still the mirrored image and I'll turn it And now the awful part, in which I could ruin everything. Giving you real time here, so you can you can see how long I'm fighting with the registering. And 
Come on. Yes. Not a hundred percent, but it's okay. And here you can see what you probably already saw is that the, on the left, the that what used to be the shadow and should be part of the flower hair uh, doesn't continue above because it's, um, yeah, I cut it off. That was stupid. And whatever black smearing there was with a golden open paint, I could actually take off with an eraser. Uh, I'm pretty... I'm pretty pretty surprised that this works. So taking off the masking sheet very carefully and slowly. And it doesn't have to have harmed the piece. So I'm repairing what's missing from the head there. Yep, that's better. So the usual, doing a little workout with the black pencil, following the hatching lines. I really love this Photoshop filter, I have to say. I'm thinking about making the lino cut in the same way. And filling in the gap between the photo print and the flower prints, creating some shadows at the same time darker shadows so that it really looks like it's sitting on top of her head. So with the eyes, in this case I will not fill any color in, brown in, any, any dark shadow, any pupil, nothing. Because the effect of the photo is, is like a ghost-like image, a dreamy sort of ghost. And that fits very well as my mother is not with us anymore and hasn't been for more than 20 years. So the ghostly image um, I can sort of relate to emotionally, if you know what I mean. Yeah, there she is. I'm very touched because I didn't expect, in both cases, how much these prints have of her soul and her ways. I now have to go on and create the last week's polls winner, 2C, with a lino cut. I hope you enjoyed this. Please tell me what you like or didn't like in the comments. See you next week.